So this is the famous Calc 2 integration by parts loop problem. We'll see why it's called the loop problem in a little bit. But you can always tell which problems are the loop problems. If you look at our problem here and look at our two equations, the E and the sine, think about the derivatives of these equations. We'll get 2e to the 2 theta, take another derivative, 4e to the 2 theta, and it just keeps going, 8e to the 2 theta. And we do it for sine, 3 cosine 3 theta, negative 9 sine 3 theta, and it just keeps going as well. So when you see an integral problem in which you have two equations whose derivatives just keep repeating, it's highly likely that you're looking at the famous loop problem. So let's go through it. So in the case of this loop problem, it doesn't really matter which equation you choose as your u and your dv, because they kind of just repeat themselves. So I'm going to choose the sine as my u, and I'll choose the e as my dv. Okay, so I'll take the derivative of my u, the derivative of it is going to be 3 cosine 3 theta. Watch out for that chain rule. Of course, I'll multi multiply d theta on both sides to get the du by itself. And I'll do the antiderivative of the dv to get my v. Now, we'll equal e to the 2 theta over 2. All right, so let's use the integration by parts recipe here. And we'll end up with this. So usually we're hoping and praying that the second integral will be easier. That's really the whole approach when it comes to integration by parts. But as you can see, definitely doesn't look that easier. We still have an e, and we still have a, a trig term. We have a cosine. And that's the thing. No matter which choice you made in the beginning for your u and your dv, it still would have ended up like this, a situation where you have to use integration by parts again. So here's the thing that you want to remember. When you do your second integration by parts in this problem, you want to make your same exact u and dv choice. See how we chose u as the trig term? My u will be the trig term in the second IBP. And my dv was the e, my dv will have the e term in my second IBP as well. So just make sure you keep to that, because if you don't, the whole problem will explode. You'll end up with like 1 is equal to 1 and some crazy, some crazy result. And before I go any further, let me just get our constants outside the integral expression. All right, so here's my second integration by parts right here. And I'll be sure to choose the trig term as my u and the e term as my dv. So my derivative of my u will be negative 3 sine of 3 theta. Of course, I'll multiply both sides by d theta to get du by itself. Do my antiderivative of my dv side, and I'll end up with v will equal e to the 2 theta over 2. All right, let's use our integration by parts recipe again. All right, so here's our second integral here. And again, it doesn't look any easier. Still have an e times a, a trig term. That's still not good. But actually, don't worry here. Something good is going to happen here. You'll see. First, let's just factor out our constants. This negative right here will cancel out this negative to make a positive 
3 over 2 outside the integral. Alright, so remember, this is what we got for our second integration by parts. So I'm just going to take this and plop it in right there. Okay. Now here's where the powerful thing happens. Remember, this is our question. We're trying to find out what this is equal to. And notice that we see the exact same thing right here. These two are the exact same mathematical thing. Just to make this easier, let's just give this a letter, some variable. Let's just call it i. And let's just say now we're really trying to find what i is equal to. And we really are. i is our question. And we're trying to find what i is equal to. So let's just call these two things i and solve for i now. Let's just get i by itself. So now I'm just going to work my algebra. I'm going to foil in this 3 over 2 into both of these quantities. Actually, yeah, a negative 3 over 2. And now I'm just going to add 9 over 4i to both sides of my equation. And on that left-hand side, I have a 1i. So of course, when I multiply fractions, i got to get like denominators. So I'm going to make this 4i over 4. And all together, this will be 13i over 4. And of course, this just goes away. And to get i by itself, I just have to now multiply both sides of the equation by 4 over 13. So now we've solved for i. And don't forget, i is really what our problem was the whole time. So this right here is our answer. So that's how these loop problems work. It's called, that, it's called the loop problem because we did that second integration by parts and ended up with our initial integral. And that's when we both called them i. And we basically joined i. So the i sort of looped back in on itself. So you'll definitely see this problem on your exams. It's always on the Calc 2 exams. It's the famous loop problem. And I hope it made sense. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments.